Hi there, I'm Shelly Gray and welcome to this video, this support video for the addition station. So um, hopefully if you're watching this you've arrived through a link in the addition station PDF file, um, probably that you've purchased from Teachers Pay Teachers. This is going to walk you through the entire process of setup. If you didn't get here through that link, if you're just if you just arrived here through YouTube, um, this is a support video for an addition station resource to teach basic um, addition strategies. So you might not get that much out of it unless you are wanting to find this resource, you can find the link down below. So um, what I want to do here today is basically take away the overwhelm that you might have after opening up that PDF document. I know there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of pages, and I, I always want to include as much as I can, and I know that ends up looking overwhelming at times. Um, you have a whole pile of teacher material, assessment trackers, checklists, all that good stuff. So I'm, I'm hoping that if you just take the time to watch this, it will take your overwhelm away, you will have a good idea of where you need to get started in order to get this running in your classroom as soon as possible. So let's start with what is the addition station? Well, this actually came about through an, a different resource that I have called the multiplication station, which is an approach that I developed um, actually in my first year of teaching and um, over the years just refined it and in 2012 released that to other teachers and currently there's thousands of people around the world using that system um, with huge success. Their students are memorizing their multiplication facts, they're eager to learn. Students who have never liked math before are actually asking to do this. Um, just huge successes. So over since 2012 I've literally received hundreds of requests to um, create an, a, a stations for addition, subtraction, and division that are similar to the multiplication station in the approach. So, introducing the multi or introducing the addition station today. Um, so, this the addition station is basically a self-paced uh, method for learning the addition strategies. Um, the addition station focuses more on strategies than on facts, just because we need those basic mental math strategies in order to know all of our facts. Um, students move through the station at a level that is just right for them. So if you are finding um, that it's almost impossible to target every single person in your classroom, this is going to make your job a whole lot easier because the work is done for you. Students are moving through at a pace that's perfect for them. They are challenged appropriately and they are actually doing more of the work so it's less work for you. Now in designing um, the, the addition station I've woven in just some basic principles of student engagement and that's what actually makes this really really motivating for your students. So students need a couple of things to be really motivated in what they're doing. They need power, fun, freedom, and choice. And the more of those they have, the more engaged they are. So in the addition station, the fact that students are really in control of their learning and they are truly in charge of how fast or how slow they can move along, that's what makes this approach extremely motivating. And that's why you get students actually begging you to do it. Um, because they're in control and when students are in control they feel good, they feel engaged, and they feel smart which is one of the most important, very, just super important to make your students feel smart all the time. Now the big goals of the addition station. So you are trying to encourage memorization of facts all the time, of course. It would be fantastic if every student in your class could memorize their addition facts and never have to worry about that again. That would be great. Now, that's probably not going to happen. You're not going to have every single student memorize their addition facts. Um, what you want to teach is strategy. So you want to teach mental math strategies that encourage students to actually understand the questions that they are seeing. Um, you, want to, you want students to actually understand what the numbers mean rather than memorize a process or a series of steps for adding. So that's what mental math encourages, is real understanding of numbers. For example, in the number 28, that number is not a 2 and an 8, it's a 20 and an 8. So mental math breaks up the numbers, it encourages kids to really get what they mean. 
So the goal of the addition station is to give kids those, those strategies, I, and I like to call them tools. It's like putting tools in your toolbox that, that you can pull out whenever you need them. So if you can provide children with, say, six or seven different strategies or different tools, they're going to be able to keep those and use them in later grades when they see different equations they'll be able to apply it to different equations easier than they would if they just had a fact memorized so we start with strategies but of course if they do end up memorizing any of the facts that you know that's just a bonus the other big goal of the addition station is just that we have students working to their full potential all the time so in an in a average class of 25 students you have some at the low end, some at the high end, and it's hard to figure out where to aim your teaching. I mean, if you're hopefully trying to differentiate your instruction, you're trying to target all those groups, but it can be really hard. So this gives you a way to do that um, without you having to plan too much because it's already planned for you. Students are moving through at a pace that's just right for them. That's why it works. Okay, so let's get right into the addition station and what you can actually expect in your classroom. So just a broad overview first of what's going to be going on in your classroom. You're going to have a box that fits letter-sized file folders. Now I have a fancy plastic box that I picked up at Walmart for about $15, I think. But I mean, you can use anything. You can use a cardboard box, just anything that works as long as it um, holds regular letter-sized file folders. Now inside are where all your folders uh, are with the activities and they're all leveled so you're going to take the time to be leveling those that's all explained in the instructions and students are literally just going to move through the levels completing each activity they self-check and then they move on to the next level after you've given them a quick oral test so it's a very um, the routine will be established quite quickly and after about a week you will notice that you're kind of moving from role of teacher to role of facilitator that first week you're going to be needing to reinforce the expectations a lot um, but after that you'll notice that you're kind of able to stand back and watch this happening and um, the, the students just know what to do. Now just a couple other things to mention in the overview. Um, so as I mentioned it's very strategic in the way that the levels move. Um, there's two major words that I want you to remember. That's isolation and integration. So I believe that when you begin a new strategy, you should be isolating that strategy, um, meaning that you shouldn't be, uh, you know, when you talk about the double strategy, I want you to just focus on the doubles for a couple classes and then maybe start integrating it with other strategies that your students have learned already. Maybe they already learned counting on or the plus two strategy. So then you could start integrating that. But when a, when a new strategy is learned, I think it should be isolated first, and then once it's been mastered, then it can be integrated with the previous strategies, and that will result in a better understanding. So the that's done for you. So what happens in each level is it begins with a few activities that isolate that strategy. So let's talk about the doubles. Maybe the first four activities are isolation activities, and that's when students are just working on doubles facts. And now the last activity or two is going to integrate all the previous strategies that have been learned. So that might include the plus zeros, plus ones, plus twos, and counting on for some levels of the addition station. So then you're working with all of them and that's when your students will start trying to choose the strategy that works the best. So I like to always talk, I, I say two words a lot in my classrooms and that's effective and efficient. So I try to get students to choose which strategy is the most effective, so which one works the best, and which one's the most efficient, which, which one's the fastest. Um, so those are words that you're going to want to be talking about a lot in your classroom. So that's how the levels work. They isolate and then they integrate. They're very, um, everyone has a different strategy. So for instance, in the grade one addition station, you start out with the plus zero facts, then move on to the plus ones, the plus twos, move on to counting on, doubles, doubles plus one, doubles plus two, etc. So each level is a different strategy that students will focus on, and then they move on and, and the levels, the next levels integrate all the strategies in the integration activities, if that makes sense. It'll make more sense once you look through the activities in your PDF file. 
Now, of course, the strategies start easy and they get harder. So you always, always want to make students feel successful. So when you look through the first level, let's say the plus zero level, you might feel like it's a little easy for your students. That's okay, let them do it anyways because that's going to start them off really strongly. They're going to feel successful right away and feel super smart right away, which is your goal for you for your students to feel smart. So start them off easy and then it gradually gets harder and harder and harder. Now the last little thing that I wanted to mention in the overview is the test. So at the end of each level, um, you should give your students an oral test. So meaning if one student finishes level one, they just come to you wherever you are in the room, ask for their one for their level one test. It's a short test, maybe 30 seconds to a minute long at the most. Now that's your formal assessment, but I really want it to be as informal as possible. You don't want your students stressing about this. You don't want them getting test anxiety about it. It's just all it is, is for you to see if they know that strategy and if they're okay to move on to the next one. If you feel that they're not quite there yet, then there's no negative consequence. Your student does not need to feel badly at all. All that means is that she just goes back and practices for a bit and comes back to you when she's ready. So please keep those tests as informal as you can. If you've watched my multiplication station video, I told this story in that one, but I do want to tell it again. Um, I, at one time when I was doing the multiplication station, had a top student who got very, very, very anxious during the test, even though they were extremely informal with me. All I was doing was making sure that they knew the facts, um, but he just couldn't take it. So what I did with him for every test was just walk the hallways and quiz him on his facts. So I mean, it took you know 45 seconds just to walk down the hallway, ask him his multiplication facts, and then come back, and that worked for him. So if you have a student that does get really anxious for the end of level test, please do something that works for that student. Don't make him or her um, do something that they're not comfortable with. Just you know, make it work for each student so that they feel really, really good about each test that they have to do. Now that's your formal assessment. Your informal assessment is going to be happening ongoing all the time. It's as you circulate the room, um, you're checking for understanding, you're maybe doing some mini lessons. Your informal assessment is what's going to drive your instruction. So you have students working at different levels. Let's say you have um, you know, three students that get onto the level eight at the same time. You might take those three students away and just do a really short mini lesson on the facts and the strategy for level eight and then let them go back and work. Uh, maybe you find that three quarters of your class gets on to level 10 right about the same time. You might do a whole class mini lesson on the strategy for level 10. Now for some students that might be new learning, for some it might be a little bit of reinforcement, but that's okay. So you, you want to try to integrate mini lessons where you can and when they're needed. Um, and so that your informal assessment, meaning your observations, that is what's going to drive those mini lessons and show you where they're needed. Now I have included assessment trackers in the PDF file. So there's a student assessment tracker that they will have in their binders or their notebooks. And there's two teacher trackers for you. So there's one there um, intended for your informal assessment. While you're circulating the room, you can be taking notes or whatever you feel is necessary. Okay, so that was kind of just a broad overview of most um, of the aspects of the addition station. Now, I do want to just tell you, um, when you're assembling your addition station, I really want to encourage you to assemble the entire thing at once, take you know two or three hours, get it done, and then you're finished. I know some people prefer to do a couple levels at a time. Um, I'm not, you know, I, I just prefer to get it done because then your fast students that are moving along, they're never going to get to a point where there's not an activity for them. You just have it all finished. Now, really, this addition station is going to probably, probably last you a couple of months in your classroom. So once you have it finished, then it's done. That's one station or one center that's finished and you don't need to worry about for the next couple of months. So I know there's a lot of content in that file, but I do encourage you just to take a couple hours on the weekend or in an evening and just get it, get it done and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay, so let's talk about preparation. What do you actually have to do to get prepared to use this in your classroom? Basically, what you are going to need is a whole bunch of file folders. Now, I like the colored folders. <clears throat> 
What I typically do is use a different color for each level and then it just becomes more visual in the box when students are in there picking their activities. Um, you'll, you'll, so you'll need a bunch of those and then basically you need some paper clips and you need a box, that's about all. Now your preparation, um, the biggest piece of preparation that you need to do is label the folders. Now you'll notice that I, and that one says 1A and 1B. So that means for level one, there's two activities in there. There's A and B. And the folders just keep going. So each double-sided activity is inside a folder. Now here's 4A and 4B. I'm going to show you an example of what it looks like inside the folder. So when you're preparing your handouts, they already have the letters on them, as you notice. There's 4A and then there's 4B. So you need to copy enough for each student in your class, double-sided, and fasten them with a paper clip. At least I always do just to keep it neat and tidy inside the box. Now also inside the folder, you are going to put your answer keys. Now a big part of this program is that students are self-checking their work. This means less work for you. You don't need more marking um, and you don't need to be doing that. Your students should be doing the work, not you. So your answer keys are going to go in there. Now these answer keys are done for you already. They're in a file um, in the addition station file that you bought. So what I like to do with them is I mount them on colored paper and then laminate them. The reason that I mount them is on colored paper is just so that they stand out against all the other sheets. Kids can tell that these are answer keys because they're on colored paper. And you definitely want to laminate them because these are going to be very, um, they're going to be used a lot. The kids are going to have their hands on them a lot. They're going to be going back and forth to desks. So please laminate these and they'll last for years and you will never have to do another answer key for year two or three or four. So that all goes inside the folder and that's what happens in every folder. Now, please be careful if you have a cut and paste activity. Of course, you don't wanna double side that one because they're cutting it apart. Any cut and paste activities that there are, I've included as the very last page, so that shouldn't be an issue as long as you're, you're watching which levels you're copying. Um, and that's the box. So basically, it's a whole bunch of file folders with activities inside it. That's most of your preparation. Okay, let's talk about introducing this to your students. So you want to take the time to do a really good job of introducing your expectations to your students before you get started with this station. This will pay off. You might feel like you don't want to take the time to do a really good job of introducing it, but please do because um, your expectations are important and it will pay off um, hugely later on once your students start using it. So I like to introduce um, a station during center time. So I like to have the majority of the class working on other tasks while I work with maybe four or five students to introduce them to the station and maybe even let them get started on it. Um, so the reason being, I like them to be able to feel, I like them to be able to touch everything, see what's inside, actually experience the station before they're expected to work on it independently. So when you introduce this to students, you need to show them exactly how it works. So basically, uh, what I've told you in this video, you want to tell them. You want to tell them how the folders are labeled. You want to show them how the codes work. So especially younger students might need a bit of practice seeing that 4A and 4B comes before 4C and 4D. Um, you want to show them exactly how you expect everything inside the folder to be kept. So this one's really important for me because I expect the folders to stay how they, how they started out. So for myself, I want the activity sheets first and then I like to have the answer keys follow in the folder. So 4A would come first and then 4B. And I tell my students the reason we have to be so, so um, good at organizing is so that it stays organized for the next person and it just makes it easier for everybody. Now I want to remind you that regardless of how old your students are, you need to let them practice even the little things that you might take for granted. For example, I always keep the activity sheets together with a paper clip inside the folder just so that they stay neat and tidy easier. Now paper clips can be confusing, right? So give your students a couple minutes to actually practice taking one off and putting it on. Um, I Just a little side note, I do like to use the larger paper clips because they're easier for little fingers.
You might even want them to practice, you know, taking an activity sheet out of the bundle without removing the paper clip just to see if they can do it. Because all those little things will, will help your organization later on. Now, as long as students know your expectations, there's no reason that they can't do that. So they can keep this the entire station very nicely organized as long as they know what you expect. Now I've tried different things in the past as far as taking the folders out. I typically prefer that students take the entire folder out when they replace the answer keys or when they take a new sheet out. I want them to take the whole folder out and then put the whole folder back in. I find that that just helps um, make sure that the answer keys aren't accidentally getting stuck into other folders. So that's that's usually what I tell them, but that's of course up to you and your students. So now that I've kind of given you a broad overview of the entire station, let's just talk about a typical day and what might happen during a typical day when your students are using the addition station. So basically, um, I like to use it as a center activity. I, I prefer to have maybe four or five students working on it at one time rather than 24 or 25. The reason being is that students are getting up and getting their own activities, they're getting up and getting the answer keys and they're putting all that stuff back. So if you have your whole class working on it, you know, you might have a few students at a time that need to get stuff and that could con cause congestion around the station. If you only have, if you're doing it as a center activity and you have maybe four or five students working on something at the same time, chances are only one person's probably going to need up at, at the box at any one time. Um, that's my reason for, for trying to keep it as a small group workstation. So basically you'll have other groups in your room working on other workstations and the addition station just becomes one of your stations that, that students are rotating through. So basically what's going to happen is that they are going to be getting up and down during class to get their activities and to self-check with the answer keys. So you need, again, I talk a lot about expectations. Um, you need to tell them what your expectations are. So when they get up to get new um, activity sheets or a new center or a new or an answer key, they go straight to the or to the addition station and straight back to their desk. There's no stopping on the way to chat with friends. You know, just put all that out there right up front and let them know exactly what you expect. And actually you'll find that getting up and down is a really good thing for some of your students, especially your, your kinesthetic learners. It's, it's a good thing to be getting up and down to get more stuff out of the station. Now, uh, what else will be happening? Well, I mentioned self-checking. So this entire station is developed so that it's not more work for you. The kids are doing the work and they're learning during the process. So you have your answer keys laminated. So once a student finishes an activity, for example, 4A, so let's say they finish 4A, they're going to get up, go to the workstation, they're going to find the 4A answer key, take it back to their desk and self-check. So they'll see if they, if they made any mistakes. If they did, they'll just correct those. And then they take the 4A answer key, take it back to the addition station, stick it in the folder, and they start on 4B. Now they also have assessment trackers. The student assessment tracker that is in your PDF file is very important because that allows the students to track their own progress so they can see exactly where they're at. Um, it also tells them when there's a, a little center activity, there's bonus center activities worked into here, and it tells them when they need to ask you for a test. So which brings me to my next point. Once they get through all of the activities in a level, so let's just say they go through 4A, B, C, D, E, and F, then they are ready for a level 4 test. Now I, I talked about the test before, <clears throat> excuse me, but basically they're just approaching you and asking them for a quick quiz on the level 4 facts and strategy. Now I have included some quick reference cards in the download for you. Um, I would laminate those quick reference cards and keep them handy and when a student approaches you for a test you just flip to that level and that tells you exactly what facts to quiz them on basically. Now during a test you're looking for two things. You're looking for automaticity with the facts meaning that the, the kids just know the fact. You're also looking for strategy. So as I mentioned before, not all students will know the facts without thinking. Hopefully we're moving toward that, but that might not happen for every student. What you do want them to possess is 
strategic thinking. So if you <clears throat> are working on the doubles plus two facts, you want your students to be using the doubles plus two strategy um, rather than, you know, finger counting or something like that. Now, if they show during their oral test that they're using that and that they know it, that's great. You give them a sticker, or tell them to shade in a box on their tracker, and they move on to the next level. If they don't, as I mentioned before, please do not make this a negative thing. Just let them go back to their desk, practice the strategy a little bit more, and come back to you when they feel comfortable. So you want to encourage metacognition. They need to be thinking about where they are at in their learning. So if they feel really confident and they feel like they're ready, and then encourage them to come to you and get a, a quick test. As I mentioned before, the tests are, you know, a minute to two minutes tops, hopefully not even that long. It's just enough time for you to get through 10 or 15 facts, um, see how they're thinking strategically, and then move on. Now, other things that you can expect, of course, you're going to have students working at different levels. Now, you will have some students who finish this <clears throat> much quicker than others. Please, um, don't make your fast students your helpers in your classroom. If they get through the entire addition station, please give them some enrichment activities or move them on to, to higher level strategies. Instead of getting them to be the helpers for the, for the slower kids, you want to keep challenging them, keep challenging them, oh goodness, sorry, challenging them even after they're through the station. Um, now, one other thing that you can be expecting is you might have students asking if they can work in partners. That, of course, is totally up to you. I personally do let them work in partners. Um, I love to hear kids talking about math and the mathematical discussion is wonderful. So that's my reason for, for allowing that. That's up to you and your own teaching style, of course. Now, the last thing that I just wanted to quickly talk about was the parent resources. If you choose to send home um, parent the parent support guide it's all included for you one thing that i just did want to mention is that these strategies um, will not necessarily be known by your students parents it's not necessarily the way that they learned so you can expect um, some questions possibly um, some uncomfortableness with the strategies <clears throat> they might not understand why you're teaching that way personally i take every um, you know, every t every I take advantage of every time that I can to be proactive with parents. So I actually, you know, at parent teacher conferences, I used to take two minutes at the end of the conference and actually teach mental math strategies to the parents that we were currently using in class, just so that they learn that and can understand where we're coming from more when we send their kids home with homework that you know involves mental math. So you might want to make that part of your part of your um, parent communication as well. Take advantage of your classroom newsletter or your website to, to introduce parents to the concept of mental math and not only the concept, but the importance of it and why it actually works. That's really important. So all those parent resources are involved, or sorry, are included there for you. You just need to copy them and send them home. Um, the very last thing that I just want to mention is that I have created this as an entire station that is strategic in how it moves from level to level. But, I mean, honestly, you don't need to use this as it's been laid out. You don't need to use it as an entire program. If you decide that you just wanna pick and choose sheets from the PDF file, that's totally fine. I mean, use it as you see fit. I can tell you that I think you'll get the best results if you use it as it's been laid out in the Addition Station program, but you uh, need to make your decision about how it would best suit your classroom. So that's all I have to say. If you need more clarification, I've you know outlined everything in that PDF file. So please read through that carefully. Watch this video again if you need to. And I just really want to say good luck with this. I think your students are going to love it. I would love you to contact me through my Facebook page or my blog. Let me know how you're doing with it. Um, I love to hear from you. So thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Good luck.